As the name suggests, counterparty risk is basically the risk that the other party won't fulfill its obligations towards you. Let's assume Mike decides to keep $10,000 at home and John decides to keep 10 gold coins at home. These are situations with no counterparty risk because, well, no other party exists. It's just Mike and his money. And of course, John and his coins. Mike decides to keep his $10,000 in a bank deposit instead. Another party suddenly becomes involved, the bank. Or if John decides to invest in a gold fund instead of keeping gold at home, the same thing happens, with the gold fund being the counterparty in his case. In both cases, the main risk is represented by the fact that the other party, the bank or the gold fund, might go bankrupt. Do keep in mind, however, that things can be more complex than this. For example, let's assume Kate buys stocks through a broker. The other party is obviously the broker, but the counterparty risk equation doesn't end here. The broker has its own counterparty risk because he keeps his money in a bank. If the bank goes bankrupt, the broker will most likely go bankrupt as well. And you've guessed it, Kate won't exactly be happy. Now, sure, bank deposits and brokerage account funds, for example, are guaranteed in a lot of places, such as the US or the European Union. But don't make the mistake of believing you're 100% safe because countries can definitely go bankrupt as well. It's perhaps the greatest counterparty risk of them all.